Let's sign ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, And she was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, now, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be done, be done according, according to your word. word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that, that we may be made worthy of all promises of Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the divine existence remain always with us. Amen. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is offered for all the intention of our parishioners and devotees. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, today, the 10th of August, the proper day of the Feast of St. Lawrence, Deacon and Martyr. St. Lawrence was a deacon of the early church. He was a follower of Pope Sixtus II. He was martyred exactly four days after Pope St. Sixtus II and his fellow deacons were martyred during the time of the Emperor Valerian, at the time of the persecution of the church. The veneration of St. Lawrence spread out throughout the 4th century in the church. As we are gathered together during these days of the Novena, we focus our attention today on St. Joseph as the patron of the church. While we see that the church is a family of God, and God had appointed Joseph as the head of the Holy Family of Nazareth. The Holy Family of Nazareth was the first church where there was love, care, concern, belief, set of morals, and all the various aspects of St. Joseph and our Blessed Mother. And Joseph being the head of the church and the head of the Holy Family, through him it was Christ who entered the Holy Family and we received through Mary, Jesus Christ as our Savior. And in that aspect, we declare, the Church declares, as St. Joseph as the patron of the Universal Church 150 years ago. Today, during this day of the Novena and all other days, we ask St. Joseph 
to help us, to guide, support, to show care and concern for the Holy Church through His intercession and prayers. And as we now prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our redemption, let us now call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God and you, and my, you brothers my brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. So my fault, so my fault, so my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together on this feast day of St. Lawrence, we praise and glorify God in the words of the Gloria. God, giver of that order of love for you, by Lawrence was outstandingly faithful in service and glorious in martyrdom. Grant that we may love what he loved and put into practice what he taught. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give 
as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work, as it is written, He has distributed freely, He has given to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your responsible psalm will be, It goes well for the man who deals generously and lends. Your response? It goes, it goes well, well for the man who deals generously and lends. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who takes great delight in his commandments. His descendants shall be powerful on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Your response? It goes well for the man who deals generously and lends. It goes well for the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He will never be moved. Forever shall the just be remembered. Your response? It goes well for the man who deals generously and lends. He has no fear of evil news. With a firm heart, he trusts in the Lord. With a steadfast heart, he will not fear. He will see the downfall of his foes. Your response? It goes well for the man who deals generously and lends. Open-handed, he gives to the poor. His justice stands firm forever. His might shall be exalted in glory. Your response? It, it goes, goes well, well for the man who deals generously and lends. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, Today is such a beautiful occasion. It is such a beautiful time for all of us to come together as a family. Today, 
also happens to be the feast of St. Lawrence, Deacon and Martyr. The theme for today's Eucharist is St. Joseph, the Patron of the Church. We need to understand these three words I will be focusing on, Patron, Church and St. Joseph. So let's look at the word Patron. The word Patron comes from the Latin word Patronus, which means protector. And so when we say St. Lawrence is the patron of our church, what we mean to say is, or rather the church says, that St. Lawrence is a protector and intercessor for all the families of St. Lawrence Church. So also with other churches where we have names of saints. Yes, my dear friends, the second word is church. What is church? The moment we talk or speak of the word church, we immediately a structure comes before us. Like the structure of St. Lawrence Church, such a beautiful church. Then suddenly when you speak of St. John the Baptist, we think of the structure, the Gothic structure of St. Of John the Baptist. When we speak of St. Pius, we see another beautiful structure. But my dear friends, church is not a structure. Church is when the Christian believers come together, assemble together to praise, to thank Him, to worship Him and to listen to His word and the result of all this, to have a fellowship and serve the people. That is the church. Now, first of all, we need to understand as a catechism of the Catholic Church in 1655 to 1657, in between these verses, it speaks that home is the first church. In fact, the Second Vatican Council, the dogmatic constitution, Lumen Gentium verse 11, says that the home is the domestic church. So when we speak church, the first impression that has to go into our minds is that our homes are the first church. And today, I am sure that you will accept it and believe what I am saying, not I am saying the church says, that our homes are the first church and during this time of pandemic we can truly, truly experience the church, our home church where we come together as a family perhaps we had lost this touch with our family we had lost our praying together as a family today we come together to pray together in the home which is the first church where our home the Catechism of the Catholic Church says that our home, in 1666 it says, that our home is the first church, our parents are the first teachers of faith and uh, our home is a place where God dwells. Now our little churches, our domestic churches, when we put all the churches together, our home churches, it becomes a large church which we call St. Lawrence Church, Wagle Estate Thani. That is when we speak about church as a larger church. Now, today as we said, the theme for today is uh, St. Joseph, the patron of churches. Saint, uh, sorry, Pope Francis in his uh, apostolic letter, Patris Corde, he says that, uh, which means with a father's heart. He speaks about St. Joseph. He says that he is the protector provider, a person of prayer, a man who did God's will. He also speaks about his qualities. He says that he was tender, he was loving and he was obedient to God. And that we see in the gospel of according to Matthew in chapter 1. We hear about him and we hear only in these two gospels about this family, holy family of Nazareth together is one according to the gospel of Matthew and in the second gospel is the gospel of Luke. Let's go to Matthew, the gospel of according to Matthew, where St. Joseph, he is engaged to Mary, and there he gets to know that she has already conceived. But the Bible says he was just and righteous. And in order to keep up her name, not to spoil her name, he wanted to secretly disengage himself from Mother Mary. But in the night, the angel of God comes in her dreams and tells him, Joseph, accept Mary to be your wife and uh, 
the child that, that she has conceived is from the Holy Spirit and then it just accepts the will of God where the angel continues and says that he will save many in this world his name shall be Jesus he is God with us Emmanuel and Joseph immediately accepts the will of God and that is the beauty of Joseph one of the most beautiful things of Saint Joseph as a head of the family is that he was obedient to God he was a man of trust he was a man who was just and righteous let's look at church history about Saint Joseph Saint Fra uh, sorry Pope Francis uh, has declared this year as a year of Saint Joseph he declared it from 8th of December 2020 till the 8th of December 2021 why is it that he declared because 100 years ago in 1920 Pope Benedict the 15th had declared uh, Saint John Saint Joseph to be the patron of families and 150 years ago that is in 1870 Pope Pius the ninth had declared Saint Joseph to be the patron of the universal church and so my dear friends we see the importance why he was so much important why is it that all these years we have not heard about Saint Joseph much why is that so much of hype about Saint Joseph in this year which we in fact it began from December 8 2020 it's because as I said it is a centenary year where Saint Joseph is uh, was declared as uh, the patron of families now what does the church teach us about Saint Joseph two things are very important to understand first is Saint Joseph not only protected his family physically but also spiritually how did he take care of his family physically we have heard that one day when the three kings came to worship Jesus to look out for the king of kings Herod got to know about it and he said I too want to worship this king and uh, the three kings or the three magis understood that Herod has a different plan an evil plan and they go the other way and they do not meet Herod and Herod gets angry and he declares to kill all the babies so Saint Joseph in his sleep and his dream the angel tells him take Jesus and with his mother and go to Egypt and so we can see Saint Joseph with all that responsibility with all giving strength to the family that protection and care and he takes them to Egypt how does he go there was no way to commute he had to go on foot or on a donkey and then they stay there for some time and again the angel Gabriel uh, the angel says in the dream that you need to come back Herod is no more there and when they return back again a very long tiring journey they have to face the storm they have to face the sand dust they have to face various sort of problems maybe thieves and robbers and the difficult uh, rivers and so many things in spite of that Saint Joseph did not bother about all the obstacles he took care of the entire family the family that was holy he brings them back to Bethlehem as he's coming on the way he is led not to go back there because the because the governor Archelaus was there and he was also as dangerous as Herod so he turns his direction and he moves to a place called Galilee in a small village of Nazareth and therefore we say Jesus of Nazareth where he settled with his family so we see that he had protected his family in such long distances in fact one of the writers write to us that he has taken the longest Eucharistic procession in nobody else has ever taken we take the Eucharist on King of Kings Day feast day Christ the King Day uh, we take the Eucharist all around this place but Joseph took the bread of heaven he took the King of Kings with him to Egypt brought him back such a long Eucharistic procession that the Lord himself was there his whole family was like a church because the living bread the bread that came down from heaven was living with him how is it that Saint Joseph the patron of church 
was uh, taking care of, of Jesus and the family spiritually. Luke chapter 2 verse 22 says that they took the baby Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem and dedicated Jesus into the temple. The first thing. And how do we know that he was taking care of them spiritually? Luke chapter 2 verse 42 says that when he was at the age of 12, he was taken by Joseph and Mary to the temple and there we know he was lost. So again, St. Joseph was concerned about uh, Jesus and the entire family. He was so much religious. He was so prayerful. He was always following the laws. In Luke chapter 2 verse 52, once again we see the word of God says that he grew in stature, in wisdom and favor. That is Jesus under the protection and guidance of his family, particularly the head of the family, St. Joseph. He grew in stature, that is he grew physically, he grew in wisdom, that is psychologically, and he grew in favor, that is spiritually. My dear friends, if Joseph is the head, Mary was the heart. And where the heart and the head meet together, there is love. And the Bible says, where there is love, there is God. God was present in the family of Nazareth because the head and the heart were together. And therefore, St. Joseph, the patron of the church, teaches every family. The family, as I said, is a church, is a domestic church. And St. Joseph, the patron of our family and our church, is telling us that you, the spouses, have to come together. And where there is love, there is God. Finally, how does St. Joseph and the Holy Family of Nazareth is going to affect our lives? Just as an engineer is going to build a bridge, he needs a blueprint in order to fix up that bridge. So also in our lives, the blueprint is St. Joseph, Mary and Jesus, the Holy Family of Nazareth. We need to look at them and build our families. Finally, St. Pius IX had said that St. Joseph keeps a watch on the family. In the early 19th century, we have seen a lot of evil was happening around in the world. There were attacks and persecutions against the church and Pope Pius the, the IX had declared St. Joseph as the patron of the universal church. Thus, as people were praying, there was tremendous power in the church and the church once again was revived. St. Teresa of Avila the doctor of the church says that she has got great faith in St. Joseph. She would intercede to him for every need. And she says, I can never ever remember any of my prayer that was unanswered when I prayed through the intercession of St. Joseph. Finally, our own Pope Francis. Pope Francis says, I have an image of St. Joseph, a sleeping St. Joseph on my table. And what I do is, when I am in trouble, when I find something difficult, I write my intention on a piece of paper and I keep it under the, the image of the sleeping Joseph. And I know that Saint Joseph, the patron of our church, in his dream, will see my intention and will lift my prayer up to God. My dear friends, there is a saying in Spanish, when you lose wealth, you lose much. When you lose a friend, you lose more. When you lose a family, you lose everything. And therefore, in order to keep our families intact, our families to be loving, our families to be devoted, always look up to the Holy Family of Nazareth. And we ask today, St. Joseph, the patron of our church, to bless us, to pray for our family, to pray for our needs. There's so much of difficulty, tension, worries, disappointment, discouragement in our lives, particularly the youth and the children are going through tremendous issues and problems. They are at crossroads of their life. They cannot make decisions. And so we as parents and also children, together, let us pray this evening during the Eucharist asking St. Joseph, the patron of our church, to pray for us, for our family, the domestic church, the home first, and then the larger church, that is the church of our St. Lawrence Vagle Thane. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have this prayer to offer, which earth has given human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that yours and mine sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the church. Receive with favor, O Lord, the offerings we joyfully make on the feast day of St. Lawrence, and grant that they become a help to our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We will lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, for always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Lawrence, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, the gifts we bring by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks to God his Almighty Father, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, forgiving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francisco, our Pope, Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, our blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Lawrence and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the serious command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, o Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, who take, take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy, have mercy on, on us. Lamb of God, who take away the, the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. peace. Lord Jesus Christ, faith and love and mercy are each of our bodies. mind and body. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say, say the, the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen.
O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O divine guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, and abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that the homage of dutiful service which we render on the feast of St. Lawrence may bring us an increase of your saving grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Efficacious Novena to St. Lawrence O valiant and glorious St. Lawrence, you truly drank the cup of suffering to the dregs. You won the palm of martyrdom in a singular and unique way, namely by being roasted alive. You showed, you showed us, us by, by your example, example that the, the love, love of Christ, Christ in you was stronger than the scorching flames and agonizing pain. pain. O, o compassionate, compassionate Saint Lawrence, during, during your last, last days, days on earth, earth you showed the powers of the world that the strength and the glory of the Church was in the poor, that the concern for the underfed and underprivileged meant more to Christ than all the gold and silver chalices in the churches. In your life as a deacon, you must have converted many people by your powerful preaching, but in your death, you moved many more hearts and still do whenever people read of your supreme sacrifice. O noble Saint Lawrence, Grant us, us the, the great grace of, of appreciating the, the suffering and trials sent us by God. May these make us truly humble and deeply grateful for all other favors sent us by the Lord. In your goodness, obtain for me the favor I earnestly seek. Remember all the petitions of our neighbors. Do not forget the spiritual and temporal needs of our parish. Valiant St. Lawrence, teach us the value of suffering. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Valiant Saint Lawrence, teach us the value of suffering. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Valiant Saint Lawrence, teach us the value of suffering. Let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, 
now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. We beseech, we beseech thee, thee, O Lord, o Lord to help us overcome, overcome the flames of our vices with the same graces you enabled St. Lawrence to triumph over his bodily torments. We make this prayer through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, through the intercession of St. Lawrence, bless all of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, good.